Welcome to the Flourishing Founders Podcast, where I interview inspiring Canadian entrepreneurs about the highs and lows of taking the leap of faith and starting their own business. My name is Ashley Deering. I'm the owner of Deering Media, a Fredericton, New Brunswick-based digital marketing agency. Let's jump into the episode. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Welcome back to the live recording of episode seven of the Flourishing Founders podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Deering, here to interview Atlantic Canadian entrepreneurs about the highs and lows of their business journey. We were on a hiatus last week, but we're back now. And today on our podcast is our guest, Samantha Shea. She is the owner of a Fredericton based dance and wellness studio called the Movement Vault. Samantha Shea is a mover, dancer, and coach who has traveled across Canada and the U.S. training, studying, and coaching various forms of movement as an expressive art as well as means for fitness and wellness. She is a certified flexibility coach with Deflying Fitness, ooh, Deflying Fitness Toronto and CanFit Pro. She is an experienced movement coach with several years worth of experience guiding all ages and abilities in safe and effective movement practices. Most part of the last 10 years, she spent performing and coaching and circus acts in Toronto. Super cool, we're gonna dive into that. But has also fallen back in love with dance. Her specialties are natural movement, flexibility, and commercial heels, which is a lot of fun if you haven't done a heels course yet. We are going to let Sam in and now. I see everyone here. Thank you for joining this morning, guys. I hope you have a coffee and you're cozy. And please hold on. I'm still getting good at this. She is on her way. Okay, I think I'll let you in, Sam. Hello, good morning, beautiful. Hi. How are, How are you? you? <laughs> How are you doing? Good, good. We just gave you a nice little warm welcome. Let everybody know what you're about. I'm super excited to have you on here today. Not just because you're a friend of mine, but you're also an entrepreneur in the community that I aspire and I look up to. I think it's incredible what you've done. I think it's amazing that you survived during this pandemic and are still pushing through. And it's going to be a really great chat today. I think I think a lot of my viewers will really enjoy getting to know you, getting to know about your business, the rebrand. You've done so much. So yeah, I'm going to dive excited. into it. <laughs> Okay, my love. So tell me, how did your journey into wellness and movement first begin? What interested you? How did you get into it? Um, well, I've always been kind of interested in dance. Like I did take some, like a couple dance classes, like as a teenager, I didn't dance as a kid. I did some gymnastics, but like nothing serious. And uh, yeah, I kind of fell out of it for a long time. And then when I was in Toronto, I was looking for something to do and something that would help me, you know, take care of myself and keep me active, but I hate going to the gym. Uh, so I tried a, a few dance classes in Toronto and just fell in love. Yeah. With just movement in general. So. And what was it about those classes? Like, what were you getting from those classes? Well, the first two were difficult because I didn't have dance experience really like, I mean, a couple jazz classes and stuff in high school, but I felt very out of place and like awkward and I couldn't remember any of the choreography and it was kind of embarrassing, but uh, it was just so much fun <laughs> that I... And I, I mean, I have ADHD, so I tend to hyper fixate on things. And I think initially I was hyper fixated on dance. I was like, okay, I want to get better at this. Like, I want to look cool dancing. I want to get the right shoes. Like, I want to go all out and, and get better at it. And then dance sort of led me into everything else. So that's amazing. So you just started like you got on the right path and kept rolling with that kind of thing. I love that. And it's yeah. really interesting too, because now you're in a position, you own a dance studio, you're trying to encourage newcomers, people who haven't danced before. So for you to have been like humbled in that sense and got in, you know, a taste of that and going through that experience of being a newcomer, being nervous, being frustrated throughout the process, like what an incredible position you're in now to try to help people through those hurdles. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like I, I think that perspective of being somebody who didn't grow up dancing and knowing what it's like like how much courage it takes and how uncomfortable it is to go to a, a dance class 
knowing that there's probably people there who are going to be like quote unquote better than you at dancing yeah. and that people are going to be watching you and feeling feeling like people could judge you obviously um in my studio we foster an environment of like no judgment so um that's not something people have to worry about but you know when you're new you don't really know what to expect so yeah and then it could be really frustrating because there's a lot of people who when they try something new they they think in their mind they have to be good at it right away or else they're not gonna like dive in and yeah that that there's there's so much there but I think being a beginner forces you to obviously get uncomfortable and that's where the growth happens so I dance changed my life and even though I sucked at it when I first went like the fact that I operate a dance studio now just blows my mind like I'm so happy I can provide an environment for people to come and like experience that growth and that those challenges and the the discomfort because that's that's where the magic happens yeah and it's so much more than just movement it's a mental transformation you're going through like you're really breaking down walls for people it's incredible what you do and I'm, I'm so happy we're here to break that down today <laughs> yeah so I need to know everything about your experience in the circus. I read your bio and I was like, oh my gosh, how does somebody get into that? What were you doing there? Like, I want to know your journey within that realm. Yeah, so um, I had taken a couple dance classes in Toronto and I was like, now I was like in the community of like, okay, what other stuff is here? Like, I know there's yoga here and I had gone to a bunch of yoga classes. I thought about doing yoga teacher training and going down that path. But that, um, I don't know, that felt to me like too much of a box that I didn't want to put myself in. And then someone had told me there was a circus school running like classes for adults. And I was like, I want to try that because I remember seeing like going to Cirque du Soleil or like watching videos of the women dancing in like the ribbons and on the trapeze. And I was like, I want to try that. I didn't know that that was possible to try as a beginner. I thought you had to like be training your whole life. Yeah. So I went to a class and immediately was hooked. Um, I did aerial silks, that's like the ribbons. That was my first like foray into circus arts, but the community was so welcoming and open. Like anyone could do circus. Like it didn't matter your body shape or um, your experience or your abilities. Like there's a girl in, uh, oh, where? Kingston, Ontario, who runs a circus school, who is a double amputee. Yeah. No way. Yeah, double amputee. Her name is Erin Ball. You guys should look her up on Instagram. She's amazing. But she, um, she, she does aerial arts, circus trapeze silks with like, like her amputated down from the knee on both legs. So it doesn't wow. matter like where you're at. It's just, it's one of those disciplines that just is open to everybody. And I love that about the community. And in Toronto, dance felt a little bit clicky. Um, like when you would go to the dance studios, like people kind of went with their friends and it was very like, especially the the people who were a little bit better, um, you know, they were there to take it very seriously and it didn't feel as welcoming for a beginner. Mm -hmm. But circus was the opposite. So. When I started circus, I also sucked at that. Um, you need so much upper body strength and I did not have it. But again, hyper fixation, I was determined <laughs> to build the strength to be able to do all the crazy tricks and drops. Anyway, I trained, I started out very light, you know, going to one class a week. And then I decided to join like their um, like more serious teams and stuff as I got better. So I was on their performance team and uh, ended up performing around Toronto and then ended up coaching um, at that school, both kids and adults for a few years. Um, and then, uh, what was I gonna say? I had taught here in Fredericton the circus stuff for a little while, like um, for one summer, I was here just for like the summer and I taught that and then went back. Um, I also taught at the circus school in Moncton, which I think has since closed. Yeah. Um, it was called Atlantic Cirque. They have one in Halifax as well. But anyway, yeah, I'm kind of bummed there's nothing here like that right now. But I mean, who knows? Maybe in the future, I'll bring something like that back. <laughs> yeah, like, thing, oh, but... hello, movement vault. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> our ceilings are not high enough. <laughs>
but yeah, it was just, it's such a transformative thing. I, I made so many amazing connections. I discovered like movement as a really expressive experimental like art. And, and I also discovered my love for like anatomy and biomechanics and flexibility when I was doing circus, cause I was teaching um, flexibility classes there as well. So that's when I started, I decided I wanted to like get certified to teach flexibility, um, to coach it. And just so I could make sure that I was doing the right things. And uh, I did a lot of like research, took biomechanics and anatomy courses and stuff. So yeah. Did you have a history in teaching? Did you ever see yourself becoming the sort of role, not even just in dance, but? No, actually like I, in Toronto, I was a web developer. So I, <laughs> did like you know I was at a computer all day did the complete opposite and it um it was only when I started like really being really passionate about movement that the circus school was like hey like we see you do you want to like try coaching classes um and that's kind of what got me into teaching and I had I didn't teach dance at all in Toronto I mean I taught it dance as part of like the circus stuff that I was doing but not like just dance until I got back to Fredericton. So unreal. That's so cool. But this one of the things I really like talking about on this account is coming back to your passions. And once you start following your passions and aligning with your true self, everything starts, you know, rolling along. And like, that's exactly what you did by going to that dance class and, you know, making a fool of yourself the first time and keep going with it. And like, it's exactly, I just, I can't imagine where I would be now if I left that first dance class feeling discouraged instead of inspired if I left that class saying well I'm clearly not good at dancing so there's no way I'm gonna go back and embarrass myself again um if I had had that attitude I wouldn't be where I am right now running a dance studio and and like being a part of this amazing community in Fredericton so I feel I'm like thanking my past self that I stuck with it. (laughs) Um, And now here we are. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's so inspiring, Sam. It's really a story of like trying to put yourself first and try to do things for yourself. And like seeing that snowball effect is so incredible. Okay. So you eventually moved back to Fredericton from Toronto. When you came here, did you come here with the vision in mind of starting a dance studio or bringing the circus here? Like what was the plan there? Oh my gosh. Well, I, so when I got back from Toronto, I Googled and looked up to see if there was any dance classes for adults in Fredericton, specifically heels, because heels had become like something I was really passionate about um, over the years in Toronto. So I was like, heels makes me feel so empowered and so badass and confident. And I want to share that or I want to continue with that was my initial goal I was like I want to keep training and I and online classes weren't really a thing then so um but there was nothing there was nothing here um there was burlesque but it wasn't exactly what I was looking for um and uh yeah I just I I just really wanted to do something and since there was nothing I was like okay well maybe I'll message a few people see if anyone wants to get together and like learn and dance together and it wasn't really I wasn't like oh I'm gonna go teach this I was like let's get together so started renting a space at the old Y um and you know the first few times a couple people came and it was really fun I would say for the first like two months there was maybe like a group of like two or three of us who would, you know, meet and I would teach them some really basic choreography. And even now when I look back at that choreography, I'm like, (laughs) but I mean, it's a learning process, right? I'm still growing. I'm sure a couple years from now, I'll look back at what I'm making now and be like, all right, you've improved. Um, But yeah, and there were times where no one came. There were times where no one showed up and it was just me dancing. Um, and it wasn't even Jungle House in the beginning. I was remembering, yeah, it was like Be Wild or something. Yeah, okay, I was trying to think of it this morning. What was it originally? So it was called Be Wild Healing, um, H-E-E-L-I-N-G. And uh, it was, yeah, I was all about women empowerment and um, kind of I all of my songs I tried to have all of my music sung by women that were empowering, uplifting songs. And like, um, that was sort of the focus. And I had done some workshops and I had done a few different things here and there. Um, And then all of a sudden it blew up. Like I 
showed up one day to class and I feel like there was 30 people waiting to come dance with me and I was like what happened here and all of a sudden I was just kind of thrown into this and I realized that that I was like creating a, a new community really in the city that and that felt pretty amazing but was also a lot of pressure and I was like okay I want to do this right and then um Brittany Wasef had reached out to me on Instagram and uh, said, hey, it would be really cool if we could do something like this together. And I was like, yeah, let's meet. So we met and we, we'd we come up with the name Jungle House Dance Company. And yeah, the rest is history. We opened the studio. I think we met up for the first time in March and the studio was open and renovated and open in September 1st, 2019. So. That's unreal. And the fact that you guys didn't know each other prior to it, like met on Instagram, went out for a coffee, basically, and we're like, yeah, let's start a business together. Like, but again, that's you taking some risks. That's you listening to your gut and following your journey. Like, I love this kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. It's another thing I thank my past self for, because if I had said, oh, no, like, I don't think I can do that, or I'm not capable of that, then, you know, we wouldn't be here. And yeah, so it's it's pretty amazing. No, um, and for the people here, how long have you been open now, officially? So, yeah, Jungle House, um, well, we started teaching classes in May of 2019 at UMB under Jungle House, but up to that point, I'd been teaching as Be Wild Healing, um, and then the studio officially opened September 1st, 2019, so, yeah. What a journey. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so speaking wild. of Jungle House, you underwent a full rebrand this year going from Jungle House. Well, first of all, starting at Be Wild, going to Jungle House, and now we're the movement vault. Can you yeah. explain the thought process behind that and the intentions behind that change? Yeah. Uh, so Jungle House was like perfect for what, like what we were doing at the time. We wanted to really we kind of were inspired by the be wild, so wild jungle. We loved the imagery of like people kind of unleashing their innermost wild uninhibited selves and like shedding away those layers and being free and like leaving the world behind and coming into this space, you know? It, we wanted it to feel like kind of a, a clubhouse where you could come in and, and be yourself. Um, our tagline for Jungle House was embrace your wild um, because we knew that if we encouraged people to forget about looking a certain way or behaving a certain way or fulfilling whatever expectations, um, we could maybe get a little more out of them and, and, and they would have a little more fun with it. But over time, we realized that, firstly, the word dance in the title was pre preventing a lot of people from trying out the studio people see the word dance and they're like, oh, I can't dance, that's not for me. But the people who initially thought that but forced themselves to come or came with a friend, a lot of them ended up like staying forever because they just, they fell in love with it and they realized it doesn't matter if you're a good dancer, that's not what it's about. You don't come to get better. I mean, you could come and get better at dance, that's great. And if getting better at dance is your goal, then that's great too. But if you just want to come because you want to move your body and you want to have fun and you want to um, spend time with pe like awesome people and like be a part of a community and, and take care of yourself like that, that's the goal really. And regard like whether you're a good dancer or not is irrelevant. It's, and, and so we thought the branding was kind of like pushing people away. So we wanted to have a more open branding to allow us to, not only invite more people into the space, but also we wanted to kind of expand our offerings. So like we also, we have dance classes, but we also have like stretch classes and mm -hmm. other kinds of movement classes and hoping we'll be offering more uh, in the new year as well. I think that's genius because it brings it more into the health and wellness aspect of it than being, and you're right. You say dancer and everybody has a, you know, the ballerina or whatever in your head, right? Like you want to appeal to everybody, which I think is amazing. Have you seen this really cute comment here from Lucy? <laughs> yes, that is so sweet. Um, I'm so glad you were able to take like our online classes. We do, all of our classes are still online. And we do offer a online only membership. So if anyone's not living in Fredericton 
and you want to join our um, online classes, that is absolutely a possibility. So yes, Lucy, get your heels on. You can there. do it. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. Heels is, heels is tricky. Most small towns, like including Fredericton when I first came back, heels was not a thing. Like, like I said, burlesque troops did their stuff, but there was no like drop in, like you could go just learn one combo and then like go another week or whatever. That's what I think so is that's really unique about what you do is the whole like drop in side. Yay, Lucy's going to sign up. <laughs> yes, girl. <laughs> But I think that's really unique about what you do as a dance studio or as a movement studio as a whole is that you have this drop in option. So there's no real commitment to it. You want to go on a Thursday, you feel like it, you know, get your heels on Lucy and go like yeah. that kind of thing. Exactly. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I didn't, I, people that we do have, a, like in the community, people who come almost every day, at least a few times a week. Um, but there are people who just want to drop in now and then when they have time or when they're feeling it. And that's totally okay too. Like where there's room for everybody. So I love that. And your memberships accommodate that too. Like you have drop in ones, you have monthly ones, like you can really like customize it to like your needs and your wants, which is yeah, great. Absolutely. Okay. This is a nice little COVID question. <laughs> So the pandemic has affected everybody in one way or another. However, I noticed gyms, spas, dance studios, they're all kind of the first things that seem to be mandated and shut down because you're sweating and you're in each other's faces and kind of, you know, that side of things. So how have you navigated? How have you survived? <laughs> how are you still here? <laughs> Honestly, it's a miracle that we're st still here. And, uh, Obviously, it's thanks to the community. Like, if they didn't continue to support us through those lockdowns, I don't know if we would have been able to come back. But we, um, yeah, the first lockdown was rough. We were closed from March until June, um, like mid March till mid June. So that was that was rough. Um, we didn't really qualify for pretty much any of the government assistance, unfortunately, because we were such a new business. So with most of that, you have to like have had a record of your like. Uh, cash flow from before and we okay. didn't really have much so most of it we didn't qualify for we did qualify for some rent rent subsidies um which probably was another big thing that helped keep us alive um and yeah but yeah just navigating all of the public health like the constantly changing rules about masks and vaccines and all of that it's been it's been a lot and i i was really nervous about the whole vaccine mandate because we are we fall in the category of we don't have a choice like we have to ask for proof and it sucks because i don't want to exclude anybody like that's no. not that's not that's not you it didn't get it's not the business vibe. to do that you know <laughs> i want everybody to be able to enjoy dance which is why i made the move to switch uh to add live streaming to all of our classes or at least as many as i possibly could um that was the only way that I felt I could get around it for now. And maybe in the summer we'll host some outdoor classes too. I like that. But, but yeah, I'm hoping the mandate won't last much longer and we can all dance together again. Cause that's, that's my goal. But yeah, we've always just a hundred percent. Like we have to obviously follow all of the public health things. We actually, um, we were reported to public health once, not, because we did anything wrong, but because I think someone saw on our Instagram people dancing without masks, but that's like, you're allowed to. You're allowed public, to do that, yeah. yeah. So public health says that if you're doing like any sort of aerobic activity, once you're in your spot and you're socially distanced, you can take your mask off. So we left that up to people if they wanted to keep it on or take it off. Yeah. Um, the rest of the time you have to have your mask on, like that's the rule. But I think someone didn't really understand that rule. So they called public health and we had public health come in for an inspection but we passed with flying colors like they actually said that our covid plan was like the most thorough they had seen and like awesome. their only feedback was like yeah maybe when it's warm out just open the door for extra airflow but like that was it like so right. oh yeah. gosh but that's so stressful even if you're doing everything right that is so stressful on top of everything else <sighs> trying to follow and the mandates as a small business owner i just gotta put it out there if you see a business like and you have a concern with the ways they're doing something, or you don't think they're like following public health orders, talk to the business first. Yeah. Like, don't report them. <laughs> because this isn't I, Walmart, right? Like this yeah. is a small business exactly. where you're accessible. I guarantee you, everybody is just doing their absolute best. Like I feel emotional about this because 
I know how hard it's been for business owners and myself included. Like, look, I'm just, I'm getting teary eyed because it's just, yeah, it's been rough. And I just feel like we all could use some extra kindness and understanding right now. I agree yeah. with you, but I love that you passed with flying colors and now, you know, now you have yeah, a plan exactly. verified. So <laughs> exactly. Like anyone yeah. asked from now on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, we're good. We're good. So Sam, you are an incredibly strong gal. You have also become a mother and a solo entrepreneur throughout this pandemic. How are you managing to juggle these new aspects of your life within everything else that you're doing at the studio? Oh, yeah, so I found out that I was pregnant right before the first lockdown. Oh so my gosh. I think I found out I was pregnant March 12th, and we went into lockdown like March 15th or March 16th. So oh. yeah, I was pregnant that like pretty much all of 2020. And I gave birth um, November 21st, 2020. And uh, I also didn't qualify for mat leave, like, like EI mat leave, because I'm a business owner. So unfortunately, yeah. we don't get paid by the government <laughs> for that kind of stuff. So I was only off for like, six weeks, and then I was back teaching. And yeah, it was, it was a lot. And uh, it's, it's been a lot. Um, my little guy just turned one, obviously. And he's an angel, but I... It's just the support again, like it all comes back to my like, you know, when they say it takes a village, I have a kick ass village, like yeah. my, my parents and um, my partner's parents and my brother and then the dance community, like everyone has like just been beyond um, supportive like you've really that. built up like a good loving support system like do you have any tips for people that are struggling to kind of find that kind of support in their life? Yeah, just reach out, honestly, like, even people who you think might not, like, maybe your initial thought is, oh, I'm, I'm a burden, or that person doesn't have time for me, just ask, because I don't know where I would be if I didn't think I was worthy of the support and the help. Um, just know that you are absolutely worthy of support, you are worthy of help, you are worthy of rest. Yeah. And yeah, you deserve all of that. So ask for help and 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 take what you need for sure i love that and what's your like go-to self-care practice when things are hectic in your life and you need to step back from being a mom and a business owner how do you take care of samantha <sighs> i mean if you get a chance, <laughs> if I get a chance. <laughs> honestly gentle movement and a bath like <laughs> baths are my favorite i when i was pregnant i had like two or three a day because it was the only thing that like made me feel like i didn't weigh a million pounds <laughs> like carrying this massive bowling ball but um but yeah even now like just a hot bubble bath like get someone to watch the baby for an hour shut off my phone and just like chill and then maybe do some stretching like I love flexibility and stretching and, and I find that really calming to my nervous system so yeah. I love that Caitlin commented here she said yes you are you are worthy of rest and love <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> so how does wellness play into the success of you being an entrepreneur oh well I learned very early on like that burnout is real I that's something that um I learned at the very beginning I mean I was teaching over 10 classes a week when we first opened because we didn't have other instructors and that was not sustainable um we prioritized hiring other instructors even when we didn't really have the money to pay ourselves because we were like we're never gonna we're never gonna grow the studio we're never gonna have time to like focus on other aspects of growth for ourselves in the studio if we're stuck in this like yeah loop. so yeah we made sure to hire other instructors to take some of the burden off of teaching and just so our community could have a wide variety of of experience and learning from different people and um yeah just prioritizing rest which uh like you mentioned earlier i did become a solo in this business recently um Brittany did step away to pursue other um, opportunities which you know all the love to her but um i it was it's definitely been a, a 
tough transition <laughs> taking <laughs> everything on because I've been teaching more classes to kind of make up for not having Brittany and um and you guys had different responsibilities and stuff too so like now you're taking on like you were splitting things in half now you have that other half that you have to carry and stuff so how have you been supporting that like um I hired myself an assistant which was like the biggest I love a good delegation <laughs> oh my god honestly um I, I read this book once, I think it was called Chillpreneur. And if anyone's interested in starting a business or being an entrepreneur, I highly recommend reading Chillpreneur. Um, I think it's by Denise Duffield Thomas. Anyway, excellent book. But she talks about um, elimination, automation and delegation. So eliminating anything unnecessary from your to do list or your life that's not like, important, it <laughs> doesn't need to be there, just get rid of it um uh automation automating everything that you can so if you want to like schedule uh social media posts and stuff like that i'm sure you know all that about all that stuff um automating emails and that's been really important and then delegation is the biggest one for me not not being the one who does everything yeah. and i'm because i have adhd i am very much like if it's not done my way, it's not done right. <laughs> I, I have to really <laughs> let go of that control because obviously I trust other people, um, you know, so I need to be able to just let that kind of stuff go. So I hired an assistant. She screens all my emails, which has been the best self-care thing I could have ever done for myself. Um, so pretty much every email goes to her. And if nice. she can answer it, she does. And anything she can't, she sends to me. So having that sort of filter there has really helped. That's awesome. Um, and that just came back to you, you know, knowing what you needed and asking for help and support like that. It, it's a hard thing to do, especially when you want to take things on and do it your way because you know it'll be the right way. Like, I so get that. I'm 100% the same way. Yeah. But I also hate to be micromanaged. Like, yeah. Which is why, which is why I'm a serial entrepreneur. Like, I have never worked well. When I was a web developer, that was the best job I'd ever had working for somebody else because I was pretty much told, here's your project, have it done by this date, Godspeed. And then yeah. I would just do it on my own time, in my own way, using my own tools. And as long as it worked and was like easily transferred to another web developer, so not like a total mess, then, um, then they were like, cool, good job. <laughs> um, <laughs> But like working, re I've worked retail, I've worked call center, like I've done all the shitty jobs and uh, it's just, it was soul killing. So I, I feel for people, but I mean, you do what you gotta do, right? Yeah. Um, I worked extremely hard and I started, probably started like a total of seven or eight businesses before I got one that stuck. So and what do you think it is about this one that's sticking in comparison to the other ones? I think firstly, starting it with a business partner was incredibly important. Like the business would not be here without Brittany. So um, it was it was really important that I had someone else to like hold me accountable and I could hold them accountable. And even through the really shitty hard stuff, like when we were applying for our uh, funding, we had to write this insanely detailed cash flow projection and like we had to, we incorporated our own business. So um, like we didn't hire a lawyer. So all of that like shitty, nitty gritty, like technical stuff was what would have, I might've given up if it was just me. I might've been like, nope, this is too hard. But having someone else to hold you accountable and figuring out together, that was like really important. And let me just say, partnerships are not for everybody. And you have to be extremely emotionally mature to have a successful business partnership. Yeah. Um, because you obviously, if you work with somebody long enough, you're gonna, you're gonna care about them on a personal level. And you're gonna take things personally, if you disagree. And that's just part of being human. Um, and so I think it's really important to be able to say, to not take things personally, when you're in a business partnership, because um, that that can go down the wrong road very quickly. Yeah. Um, so I and think that takes practice and stuff too. So in this current position, do you ever see yourself having like, if, if somebody's watching now, is truly passionate about your studio, would you see yourself <laughs> having another co-owner or management? Um, or if they wanted to come at me with like a really big investment, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but in all seriousness, like I, 
I feel like everything happens for a reason and I love this business like with my whole heart and I put everything that I have into it all of my spare time which is you know few and far between but yeah. everything I have <laughs> her whole self business. is being invested <laughs> everything I have like I've invested my own money um I didn't pay myself for a good chunk of last year like I just took government support because we just every by the time I paid my instructors, which I try and pay them really fairly and like pay bills and stuff, there was nothing really left over for me. So it's just like, that's okay. Everything goes back into the business and yeah, hoping we, we keep kicking around, but yeah, everything happens for a reason. And I feel really confident in where I want to take the business from here on out. So I'm happy, you know, chugging along on my own for the it's moment. A chapter. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What's been the most rewarding or fulfilling part of this journey for you? And just kind of like this, not even just the movement involved or Jungle House, like this whole overall journey into wellness, fitness, like what's that given to your life? For me, um, learning the process and practice of embodiment has been the biggest thing because I think up until I found movement like purposeful movement um not just going to the gym and like you know doing 10 reps or whatever of this one thing um but like really joyful intentional present movement um before i discovered that i feel like i was sort of just a zombie living in my own body and i wasn't really experiencing what it was actually like to be present in your body and using dance and movement and doing the training I've done and teaching other people on how to build their own body awareness um, and how to come into embodiment in their own bodies has been transformational. So I think it's, it's, that's definitely been the most rewarding thing and seeing other people when that little light goes on and it starts to click like, Oh my God, this is what it feels like to be fully present in my body and to move with intention. Like, that's extremely rewarding as well. Um, oh my gosh. And what advice can you provide to somebody who has been seeing you on social media, seen the studio, seen the dances, they want to come, they're too scared to come try it on their own. Like you literally going into that first dance class, if you could give yourself a piece of advice, what would that be? So a couple of things. Firstly, if you're on, if you follow our Instagram and you see the videos where people are, you know, it's the three people and they're dancing together and they look like they're having a blast. They are having a blast. Um, but know that they didn't come to that. Like that wasn't like instant. That was after yeah. a whole hour of drilling the moves and practicing. And most of the time they make mistakes in those videos and you might not notice them because you didn't, you weren't in the class. You didn't do the choreography. So you don't know what to look for, but I guarantee you, like, when they're doing those videos, they're extremely nervous. They've just drilled it for an hour, but they're having fun and putting themselves out there. And that takes a lot of courage to go on those videos. So don't look at those videos and feel intimidated and think, oh, my God, I can't dance like that. Because that's, it's not an accurate picture of what the class is. It's the finished result. Yeah, that's like, and that's not even, it's not even about that. Like, we show, we post the videos because we want people to, like, see the fun combos that you can come learn and we want people to see how much fun you can have in class but it's not about the end result it's not about getting the choreo perfectly it's not even about being good at dancing it's just about discovering moving your body in a different way and like connecting with your own body and building confidence people think that confidence is something that that comes by being good at something but that's that's not at all that's totally backwards confidence happens when you go through things that are challenging and you come out the other side and you learn from it. And that's, that's what confidence is. So, you know, no, I wasn't confident walking into class the first time, but I've been through all the embarrassing. I've messed up the choreo. I've forgotten the choreo when I was trying to do videos. I've, I've like, you know, I've done all of that. I've blanked like you know even in Toronto in a like full class we do groups at the end there's 30 people watching me and I'm completely blank like in a room full of amazing dancers like I know the feeling trust me <laughs> but <laughs> and uh but yeah it's it's 
that's where the confidence comes from going through those experiences and and still coming back and still showing up for yourself and and putting in the work so um yeah i just i would tell people it's not about the end result it's not about getting anything perfect it's not about being perfect it's literally just about um challenging yourself so that you can grow as a person and make connections and take care of yourself so yeah I love that. This has been such an uplifting chat. Like, I hope everyone that's watching this is as inspired as I am to go shake your booty later. <laughs> Thank you for coming on, Sam. That's the end of my questions there. It was so much fun to interview and just kind of like get to know your experience too, not just your journey here in Fredericton and what you've done with your business here, but how you got there and how you followed your own passions. And I'm a huge person that's into like manifesting and listening to the universe and following the signs and everything like Thanks. that. So seeing you go through all of that is so inspiring to me. So amazing. You were an incredible guest. I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me on. It's awesome. Tell, tell the people where can we find you? What can we buy from you? Pitch yourself to me. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, thanks, Andy. Oh. Thanks, <laughs> thanks Andy. Um, you, yeah, you guys are all amazing. Honestly, the community is amazing. You can go follow the studio at the movement vault NB. And you can follow me at Samantha Shea Butter. What's your like perfect Christmas gift? If I was to buy something for a dancer in the community, what would you recommend from your? Ooh, um, oh, that's a good question. Like probably like a bath bomb or something. <laughs> something for the recovery. <laughs> yeah, for after class when we need to like go go soak our bodies because you know we worked really hard. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. And come, come take a class. And if you're not in the city, you can take an online class. Your first class is free. So if you haven't been to the studio before, shoot me a DM and I'll set you up with a free class. You can come try it. Um, we have a special schedule this week uh, just for holiday drop in. So if you guys want to shake your booty to some Christmas music, you can come do that. And then our regular schedule starts again after Christmas. So Amazing. All right. Thank you so much, Sam. I'll post a replay here. If you guys weren't able to catch it this time, it will be live on my account. And I'm actually, I know next week's Christmas, but I'm actually going to have a show next Thursday, next Sunday on the 26th is Boxing Day. I have Zachary Lake's photography slash videography Ooh, coming on here. I he's know. awesome. He's, he's done awesome. some of the videos. He's done some of the, the dance videos for the studio. So yeah. definitely recommend checking. You guys out. do some really cool like music video s dance videos and stuff. So I'll talk to him about that. Him and I kind of got into photography at the same time. So it's going to be really cool to talk to him about his journey and how he's built up his own business. So tune in next week, 10 o'clock right here. We have another fabulous entrepreneur coming on, but thank you so much, Sam. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. No to you problem. Happy holidays, everybody. <laughs> Take care. Bye.